Hey friend, welcome to the Branding with Jade podcast. I'm Jade, also known as the Aussie Adventuress, and I left the high-flying corporate world to chase my dreams and build an online business. Now, my biggest passion is teaching you how to get paid to be yourself doing what you love. If you want my secrets on all things personal branding, marketing, entrepreneurship, and making money doing what you love, then lovely, you are in the right place. Let's go. All right. Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 31 of the Branding with Jade podcast. And I am very, very excited to be here with you all. I really missed not doing an episode last week. You know me, I love to be here. So it felt very strange not doing one. Um, But it was also really nice to just enjoy my time with Freddie while he was home because he actually ended up being home for two weeks, which was really, really nice. So we got a lot of time together after he'd been away for like two months because he got stuck in another state due to all the coronavirus restrictions and everything that was going on. So it was really nice to have him home. It was really nice to not be working at the restaurant because all the other times he's been home, it's been a real struggle for us because I'd be working nights and I wouldn't really get to see him a lot. And so this was so nice to really actually just enjoy each other's company and really appreciate everything that we have and everything that I'm creating right now and all the momentum in my business. It's so exciting. Um, Like I've said in recent episodes, I've made so many investments in the last couple of months since being in this isolation period and it's really exciting to see the momentum happening from that and to make a decision that I'm not going to return to work. I've had so many signs that this is the right move, that my business is thriving. I'm really excited about all the offers and new services I've introduced. My course is out. I've offered my one-to-one services and so much amazing stuff has happened throughout this time. So it's just so nice to be able to really feel aligned and connected and on purpose again, which is something that I lost for a while. And so it's really, really nice to have that back. I've had so many breakthroughs in the last week. I have done so much and it's just been amazing. So if you do want to apply to have a free clarity call with me or do some coaching with me, then you can access that on my website. Now all the information you need to know about the program and how to work with me is all up on my website now. So I'm super proud that I got that done and I've put that out there now. And I've done quite a few clarity calls already and I've been connecting with so many beautiful people and it's just really, really lovely. But that's not the point of this episode. I have a really juicy topic to share with you all today. I am really excited to be getting back into the swing of work mode. Um, Freddie flew out yesterday, so I've got about three to four weeks on my own again. And I'm really looking forward to getting that momentum going and really going hell for leather with my business. So very exciting. And yesterday what I did was I did some overdue hashtag research. And while I was doing that, I thought I'd do a poll on my Instagram about whether people would like to know about how I do it. And the answer was a big, huge, resounding yes. So I thought that would make a really awesome topic for this episode. So that is exactly what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to talk to you about my hashtag stepping method and walk you through how it works. Um, I'll probably also end up doing a blog post that goes through this in more detail as it's something that can be easier to understand if you see the images and visualize what I'm talking about. Um, So keep your eyes out for that later in the week as well. But for now, let's just talk it through. I want to share with you all my top tips on doing hashtag research. So first things first, when it comes to researching hashtags, you don't want to just be using any old hashtags. You first want to start by thinking about your niche and your main content pillars or topics that you talk about often. 
So for example, we all know my niche is personal branding. So some of the topics I talk about often, which can be referred to as my content pillars, would be things like social media, content creation, my experience as, as a coach and working with coaches, how building a personal brand opens up a world of opportunities for you, living your dream lifestyle, all of that kind of stuff that I talk about regularly. So within these content topics, there's various hashtag sets that I can create. So I could use hashtags that are related to branding, coaching, content, social media, Instagram, dream lifestyle, etc. So what I would do is I would take all of those main words that relate to each of my topics and then I would search for those words in the hashtag search in Instagram and then it will give me lots of related hashtags I can look into. So the key is to get a variety of hashtags with different levels of use. There's no, so for example, there's no point me using the big tag branding because there's 21.1 million posts under that tag at the moment, which means the chances of me trending in that tag or staying in the recent posts for long are really slim because there's so many posts being posted for that tag every second. So there's not a lot of chance that I'm going to trend there or get a chance to be seen there. So what I would do is I'd go to the Instagram search bar, go to the hashtag section, I'd type in branding, but instead of choosing that as a hashtag, I'd scroll down through the tags that are related to that one until I find ones with a smaller amount of posts. So for example, if I look under branding, there's a tag called branding inspiration, which only has 147,000 posts. And then there's one called Branding Identity, which has 232,000 posts and so on. So I just keep going through each of my main topics and just noting down all the hashtags that are related to that, that are within a small amount of posts. So I usually put them into different sections. So I'll have tags that are from zero to 100,000 posts within the tag. Then I'll have tags between 100,000 to 300 posts, then 300 to 500,000 and over 500,000. So I'll note those tags into different sections. And I'll do this over and over for each of the main words that I want to search. Another way that I search for tags as well is to look through people that are in a similar niche to me and post similar content to me and look at the tags that they're using and get some ideas from there. So at first, it's just like a brain dump. So you're just doing the research and you're just writing down all the hashtags that you find. So that's what you do first. And I, and I separate them based on how many posts are for the tags. So that way I can go through and I can go, okay, these are all my tags in this amount of posts. These are all my tags in this amount and so forth. Once I have done my research and I've exhausted all the words that I can think of that relate to the topics that I talk about, and I've searched through the various influencers and other businesses that post similar content to me and I've done my brainstorm of my hashtags, then the next step would be to create actual hashtag sets. So I would create, set, you're allowed to post 30 hashtags per post. And while there's lots of arguments around how many hashtags you should use, whether you should use the full 30 or not, um, I always am of the mentality that the more hashtags you use the better because it's more chance of you showing up in more searches so if you can use all 30 use all 30 there's a reason Instagram allows you to use 30 hashtags so why not use them all um before I move on there's also the debate around whether you should post your hashtag in your comments or in your actual caption personally I always post the hashtags in my first comment mainly for, like there's actually no difference really but mainly for me it's a look thing and it's also the fact that I always write such long captions that I can't actually fit my hashtags into my captions so I like to make the most of being able to actually share what I want to share in my caption I don't want to waste space on hashtags so my hashtags always go in my first comment 
But what I always do as well is I always put five dots before the hashtags because then it makes it look more visually appealing. You're not, you're not actually seeing the tags. You're just seeing the dot, dot, dot. So if people see that, they're not actually seeing that it's a bunch of hashtags. They're just seeing a dot, dot, dot. So it looks more visually appealing. Now, let's go back to hashtag sets. So once you've done the research, you've done your brainstorm, you've got this whole big list of hashtags that you could use that are related to the topics that you want to talk about, then what you want to do is you want to create hashtag sets. So this way, when you're going to do a post, you have your go-to sets of tags that you can use easily. So the way I like to do it, and this is where the hashtag stepping comes in, is I aim to have five to 10 tags that have between zero to 100,000 posts. This is why I was saying to filter them that way so that you can actually then go through and choose your tags based on how many posts are in that. So five to 10 tags that have zero to 100,000 posts, then 10 to 15 tags that have between 100,000 to 300,000 posts, then five to 10 tags that have between 300 to 500,000 posts, and zero to five tags that have posts over 500,000. Now, generally, I wouldn't go for ones over 500,000, but sometimes as you start to rank or you start to trend, then you can push it to those higher tags because you're getting more engagement, you're getting more notice. So Instagram will be more likely to help you trend in those bigger tags as well. But really, you should keep it below posts with 500,000, below tags with below 500,000 post to start with because that's the sweet spot. Once it goes above that, then you really start to get lost in all of the posts. So it's really good to have that kind of stepping. And the the reason why I do 10 to 15 in the post between 100 to 300,000 posts is because that's a really good happy medium. So that's where you're really getting the most bang for your buck. So I like to really maximize it on the smaller tags and then have a few in the bigger tag posts. So that's how I spread it out and that's how you can really start to trend and see yourself in the top tags. Now, and like I said, anything over 500,000 and you really reduce your chances of trending or being showed in the top tags. So there's not really much point using those. If you're using tags like love and travel and follow for follow and like for like and all of those tags, all it generally does is A, attract a lot of bots that target those tags and B, just it's a wasted tag because you're not going to get seen and you're not going to have as much chance of staying and trending in that tag. So the way of stepping the tags, like I've said, means that you have more potential to show up in different searches. Now, of course, ranking for tags that have a low amount of posts isn't as powerful. So say if you're in the zero to 100,000 post range, if, if, you're t- if you're ranking for tags that only have like 10,000 posts or only have 1,000 posts, then your chances of being seen are still not that high because there's not as many people searching for that tag and using that tag. So while you may have more chances of staying at the top a lot longer, not as many people are going to come across it because they're not searching for that tag. So that's why the tags between the 100 to 300,000 posts are the sweet spot. And that's why I tend to put majority of my tags in that bracket because then you're really getting that higher quality of people finding you. And this is why you want a healthy mix of tags from each post range so that you have a lot of chances of people finding you. The reason why it's good to start with smaller tags as well is because the more you rank in those tags, the more Instagram starts to reward you with engagement and it increases the likelihood of you showing up in the top posts for the larger tags as well. And then this is how you increase your exposure. Now, Once you've got that part down, the other thing you want to do is check the type of posts that are actually trending in the tags that you're selecting. So when you're doing your research, it's not enough to just choose a bunch of hashtags. You really want to actually go into the tag and see what types of posts are showing up for that tag. And you also want to click into it because you want to make sure it's not a banned hashtag. If it's a banned hashtag, you'll see that it doesn't actually show any content anymore. 
So you want to see to make sure that there's recent recent posts in the tag and you want to see what kind of posts they are to make sure they suit the vibe of your account and align with your values and your messaging. Because if there's a tag that you think would suit your account, but then you click in it and the content is nothing like what you post, then there's no point really ranking in that hashtag because the people that find you there are not likely to be your ideal client because they're searching for different content that isn't like your content. So you don't want to really rank for tags that aren't your vibe. You want to go with things that are aligned with your vibe. So yes, it's a little bit more time consuming, but it's worth it in the long run to make sure that you're choosing tags that align with your message and your account and your style of content. Now, of course, whilst it's really important to have good hashtags and it's a great strategy, the key is to also have quality content or when people are searching through those tags, they're not going to click on your post anyway. So it's all well and good to use the right hashtags, but if you don't have posts that get people clicking on them and actually coming to your profile and looking at your post, then your job still isn't done. So you need to have quality photography, you need to have engaging graphics, you need to have pictures of yourself that make people want to click, you need to have posts that make people want to engage, and you need to be thinking about your content. The content is still the most important part of the strategy. The hashtag will help you show up and will help you be found, but there's no point being found if it's not resulting in people coming to your profile and engaging on your content and following you because the whole the point of hashtags is to get seen and to get more followers and more engagement and more people connecting with you and wanting to work with you, buy your products, that kind of stuff. So hashtags alone are not a strategy, but using the right hashtags will help you to increase your growth and to be seen by more people. Now, Another thing that is also important is to mix up your hashtags. You don't want to just be using the same set of tags all the time. So it's not enough to just go research 30 hashtags and then use those same 30 hashtags day in, day out for the next year. You need to research a mix of different sets. So that's why you want to brainstorm as many hashtags as possible. And then what you want to do is you want to come up with your different hashtag sets. And ideally, it's good to have a mix of like 20 to 40 different sets so you can rotate between them so you're not using the same tags all the time. And then this means you don't have to research as often. But you still need to be doing research regularly to make sure your hashtags are still relevant, that they're not banned or blacklisted, and that they haven't ended up in the higher post range. Because if you've got hashtags that are right on that cusp of they've already got 500,000 posts, then they're going to go over that fairly quickly. So you want to be researching to make sure that you're updating that and still staying within the right post range. So that all your hashtags aren't over a 500,000 where you're not going to rank them. So this is why it's important to change your sets regularly and to be doing regular research so that you're mixing it up so that you're not banned or shadow banned by Instagram. We still don't know if that's a real thing, but there is talk about it. And it's also so you don't come across as spammy to Instagram because there's all the different checks on Instagram that can check what you're doing. And if they see that you're just using the same hashtags all the time, then they're going to pick that up and that's going to stop you from being shown to more people as well. The other thing as well is you want to make sure that the hashtags are actually relevant to your posts, which is why if you're posting about all different topics, you want to have different sets that relate to the different topics. And you also want to keep in mind that you want to use hashtags that are specific to your actual post. So while it's good to have your go-to sets, it's also good to leave space for five to 10 hashtags that are related to the actual photo. So say, for instance, you're at a cafe or you're traveling somewhere or you're using certain brands, like you're promoting certain products in your photo, then you can use the tags that are relevant to those things as well. So you could have tags that are based on the location you're in. You can have tags that are based on the brands that are in the photo. 
And that way you're mixing it up and you're making sure the tags are actually relevant to your photos. So yes, it's good to have go-to sets, but you also want to have sets of tags that are relevant to specific locations and brands that you use. So you can do that kind of research as well. Or say, for instance, you're at a cafe, instead of just posting your generic business type hashtags, you could then post hashtags that are related to coffee and cafe and working in a cafe and that kind of vibe. So you can research, see how you can research wider areas and more topics so that you're actually then using a much wider selection of hashtags. Now, if that all sounds like, oh my God, there's actually so many different things I could do. There's way too much I could research and it's all really tricky and you tend to just get caught out with posting and trying to search the hashtags on the day that you're posting and then you get caught out and you don't use the full 30 and you get flustered and confused, then I actually came across a really good resource last year which has helped me so much when I didn't want to do the hashtag research myself. There is the Hashtag Society, which is a membership group that I was part of for a while. And she basically does the research for you. And then she just has this whole big directory of hashtags. And you can literally search any topic. You can also request topics. And basically, you ser- when you are planning out your content, you would then go into the hashtag library, choose what topic your post is about search the hashtags and you've got hundreds of thousands of hashtags to choose from so you never have to worry about using the same hashtags over and over you can keep rotating different hashtags and different sets so that you're staying relevant and staying consistent and using different hashtags so you're ranking in different areas so those are my top tips on how to do hashtag research Like I said, it can be a bit confusing to understand when you're just talking about it. So I am going to do a blog post on the topic as well. So where you get the show notes, um, there'll also end up being a link to the blog post where you can access to see what I'm talking about and actually understand um, what I mean from like seeing it in action where I'll show you the screenshots from my Instagram and how I do it. That way it will help you to understand it a little bit better. And you might have seen if you watch my Instagram stories that I literally have a whole entire spreadsheet that I use. So I've got all my topics laid out and I've got my different hashtags that suit different topics and that kind of thing. So I'll give you an an idea of how I do that as well. So you can get an idea of how to do it for yourself. So that is it. That concludes this episode. A bit of a quick one, but a very important one if you want to have a chance of really making the most of your hashtags that you're using on Instagram. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And like I said, if you would like to work with me, if you would like to learn from more from me, grow with me, have a call with me to talk about any topics related to personal branding, social media growth, all of that kind of stuff, just go to the show notes. There will be a link where you can, where you can fill out to apply to work with me. And if you would like to get access to the hashtag membership that I mentioned instead of having to do the hashtag research yourself because sometimes you just don't want to make time to do hashtag research, I get it, then that's also going to be linked in the show notes. It is a really awesome resource. I don't use it anymore, I will say that, because I just decided that it wasn't necessary for me because I got a lot out of it. I now do my own research and that kind of thing. But at the time when I didn't really have the time to do the research, it was a really handy resource. So if you're somebody that doesn't want to do the research and you would like to just have a go-to list of hashtags to use at your fingertips whenever you need, then it is a really awesome resource. So I will have that linked for you in the show notes as well. But that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got value out of it. And I look forward to seeing you rank in more hashtags. I'd also love if you do see a difference when you're using your hashtags, tag me on Instagram and share the results with me and share that you that you listened to this podcast episode and that it helped you because I'd love to share that with other people and shout you out for taking the feedback and 
implementing it because the real key to anything is to implement what you've learned. So I really hope you enjoyed this episode. It is so good to be back. I love that I get to share my knowledge with you and I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Thanks for listening and bye for now.